Hello everyone. I hope that you're doing well. So today I'm talking about another book and it's a rather spooky one. So if you're not into horror, that's just a heads up for you. Um, today I'm talking about Dark Water by Japanese novelist Koji Suzuki. Um, Koji Suzuki is the author of The Ring, which was made into the famous Ring movie series. And he's also the author of the short story Floating Water that was adapted into the movie Dark Water. Um, saw the Japanese version recently and it was really good. I haven't seen the American one, but we all know how remakes go, right? <laughs> So, um, Floating Water is the first story in this collection, and it's probably the best known. There's seven stories and a prologue and epilogue that tie into the last story. So Floating Water, like I said, it's the first one, and it's about a mother and daughter who move into an apartment complex after a bad divorce. The daughter finds, a, like, a red Hello Kitty bag that keeps coming back no matter how much the mom keeps trying to throw it away. And the mom also has this creepy feeling about the water in the building. Like, whenever she pours herself a glass, she's like, she can never get herself to finish it, even though it looks fine. It turns out the building is haunted by a girl who fell into the open water tank on the roof and drowned, and was never discovered because they didn't run maintenance regularly. It's a really scary thought, and the execution is very well done. Characters are well developed for such a short story. It's like one of the shortest ones in the book, actually. And the relationship between the mother and daughter is really sweet. And it has a different ending than the movie, so even though I thought I knew the story really well, I was actually very surprised. So, Solitary Isle is the second one. And it's probably my least favorite story in the book, if we're going to be honest, just because it asks you to suspend your disbelief a little too much. Um, it's about this guy who's about to go on an expedition to a man-made island by Tokyo. And he's really interested in going there because his now deceased best friend boasted about dumping his pregnant ex-girlfriend there and leaving her. And that girl who was never heard from again. And the protagonist even has poked around and checked with her friends to see if she's been around. And they're all like, nope, haven't seen her. So that's the huge problem with this one. Who in their right mind wouldn't immediately report that? Like, even if it was just a boast from some playboy jerk who was about to croak. That's like, not the kind of thing I would just be like, okay, you know? I mean, the dude even makes a point of checking with her friends. Like, he does kind of take it seriously. But he doesn't bother reporting a possible case of severe domestic abuse. Okay, then. Also, why was he even friends with that guy? That guy seemed terrible. R raises some questions about the protagonist. He doesn't seem particularly cool himself. So that one was my least favorite. And going that one after Floating Water, I was like, dang, I really hope the other stories aren't like that one. But it's like, it, it turns out that's not the case. The other stories are remarkably good. And, you know, there's always that one weaker link in the chain. And that there's nothing wrong with that. The next story is The Hold. It's about a fisherman with a throbbing headache who's looking for his wife, who seems to have gone missing the previous night. The fisherman is a horrible dude. He beats up his family even in public, and eventually discovers the horrible truth not only about his wife, but also about a spiral of domestic abuse in his family. There's a little bit of supernatural horror in this one, and it's used to illustrate how violence is passed down. This one was really good. It was kind of unpleasant to read at times due to the subject matter, and the scariest part wasn't the supernatural stuff. It was the worry that the son of the fisherman would turn out the same way. So that one was really good. It was a definite step up from Solitary Isle, and I really liked it, and it made me it made me kind of excited to see what was coming next in the book. The next one was Dream Cruise, and for the first time since the first story, we have a likable protagonist. He's a uh, young, I think he's like 30-year-old man who's been invited on a yacht cruise by his friends, who are a married couple, who are totally in a pyramid scheme, and the point of the cruise is basically to get him to join in. They're kind of frustrated though because he's pretty resistant to the idea. Eventually, this child-sized Mickey Mouse shoe floats by, and the young man fishes it out of the water. He's kind of intrigued by it, but the husband and wife are kind of freaked out, and they haven't put it back in the water. The boat stalls, and nothing they do makes it go again, so they conclude that something is blocking the propeller, and the husband goes down into the murky water to check after, like, a really long time spent trying to get the boat to go. <clears throat> when he comes up, though, he's, like, panicking and coughing, like, barfing, and they have to put him to bed in the hold. And um, he claims that there was, like, a dead little boy with bare feet clinging to the boat, stopping it from moving. And this was, like, like one of the first times reading the book where I was like, 
Well, like, in the hold I was, but, like, I actually cared about the protagonist of this one, so I was like, oh no, <laughs> you know, it was like I actually got kind of, kind of chills reading this one. Um, of course, the main character assumes that he was just panicking because he was drowning or something, and he decides to, he eventually just decides to swim to the bay and call him the Coast Guard since their radio isn't working. And as he's swimming, he starts getting the creepy feeling that the drowned boy will come and, like, cling to him. But he makes it to the wave breaker thingy and starts to walk along it back to shore. And as he's walking, he finds a Mickey shoe, which, between the break and the platform, as if someone fell in and caught their shoe as they fell. He thinks that he sees the outline of a kid playing in the water by the yacht, and then it ends. It's really creepy, it's well done, and I enjoyed it a lot. It's one of my favorites in the book. I did, I did kind of... It, it did defy my expectations a little bit. I kind of thought that the husband and wife would be responsible for the drowning kid due to their reaction to the shoe. They're like way more freaked out than the protagonist. They're like, put that thing back in the water, you know? But it, it turned out that they weren't responsible for that. It's That's not a criticism. It's just like a prediction I had and it didn't come true, which is fine because I like having my expectations subverted. So Adrift is tied for my favorite with the last story. Um, it was also the one that maybe that I think freaked me out the most, except for the first story. That's why they're tied. They both freaked me out equally. <laughs> a fisherman is on a big fishing boat on his way back home when they come across a small yacht with nobody on it, just drifting in open water. They decide to pull it back with them, and the main character decides to ride along on the yacht as they pull it. And as he's going to take a look around and investigate to see what could have happened, he finds absolutely no sign of a struggle. And also the journal of the dad of the family that was on the yacht he finds that too, and it starts out normal, but it gets really creepy, which is something I really like. Um, I love creepy journals where, th where things start to slowly go wrong or get scary, and it's hard to do right, but this short story did it really well. And it also does this whole cursed artifact thing really subtly, and yeah, it's really good. It's probably tied for my favorite. Um, so the next one after that is Watercolors. I always forget that watercolors is a thing because it's placed between my two favorites. <laughs> watercolors is pretty good, but I had a hard time understanding exactly what was going on at the ending. It's about an independent theater troupe that's putting on a play in an abandoned multi-level disco. And during one scene, water drips onto one of the actor's faces. So this dude gets sent up, the lighting guy gets sent up to the top floor during the play to investigate. The bathroom up there has a pipe that's clogged with like clumps of multicolor hair and that's somehow making the leak and the atmosphere is really creepy, feels like he's being watched, but then it like ends with like reviews of the play and there it's revealed that apparently the part with the guy collecting the hair out of the drain was actually part of the play. It's a pretty cool idea, but like I said, it's kind of overshadowed for me and it took me a little while to figure out what was going on. The final story before the epilogue is Forest Under the Sea. Like I said, this one's tied for my favorite with Adrift. It doesn't have any supernatural elements and is just as scary or maybe even more scary, especially if you're claustrophobic. This story is about two guys who are on a hike looking for a cave and the main character is married with a second kid about to be born. And while he's happy to have another member of his family, he also feels like another kid but with another kid, he'll have to give up adventuring around in this caving club he's in. So this is like his last hurrah, you know? They find a cave, and it's a pretty tight squeeze, but then it opens up into a huge cavern, and they're really excited and decide to go down further through another tight passageway. But there's an accident, and the main character ends up getting trapped. It's really scary, and the way the accident is written and pretty much everything afterward is really unsettling. It's both very moving and kind of disturbing, and it ties into the prologue and epilogue story. Even though, And even though I've spoiled a bunch of stuff in this review, I'm not going to spoil this one because it's best to read it and experience it for yourself. It's really good. So Dark Water is a terrific horror story collection. The stories are pretty short, but the characters are as layered and lovingly crafted as if they were in a full-length novel. The horror elements don't go over the top, which serves to make them even freakier, especially if you're reading them in dead silence, when everyone else in your house is asleep. And I think that I would really enjoy reading it again, even though I know everything that happens. It has a high factor of rereadability, I think. I highly recommend it. So, um, yeah, that's my review of Dark Water by Koji Suzuki. Um, it's, uh, pretty easy to find if you want to read it. Um, I highly recommend it, especially if you like the movie Dark Water or the Ring movies. You 
will really like this one too. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I hope that maybe you take a look at the book and pick it up for yourself. Bye.